Welcome back everybody to another Battleship tutorial video. In this one we'll be looking at how the link cable works and some ways of implementing it. I've spent a few hours trying to get this working uh, cl as cleanly as I can, um, but you'll have to stick with me. I will be posting this in the GB Studio subreddit and the Discord afterwards um, to try and get some help from people who might know a bit more than me. Unfortunately, the GB Studio documentation doesn't have anything on the link cable thing, so it involves a lot of trial and error. Luckily, there was a video that somebody made showing that it does work. Yeah, there's this video here about testing the GB Studio uh, link cable, and he basically gets two Game Boys. One of them is hosting, one of them joins, and then they transfer uh, data, they check the data against each other, and they basically say success. Um, but that's as far as it goes, and I'm not sure that they did anything else other than that. So hopefully this video will be a stepping stone in getting even more information out there. I got a whiteboard here with some uh, tips on it, that I or things that I did basically. So um, first of all, I kept it very simple. Um, as you can see here, there's a 3x3 three three grid. Um, one of them says defend, one of them says attack. So in this scene, you basically set your boat position, and it has some kind of complex um, checks to make sure that it's actually in the correct position um, before letting you uh, actually put it in the place. Um, and it doesn't have any um, checks to see, you know, if we had a second boat, you know, where would we put it and how would it work? It's just for one boat right now. Um, and then in this scene, it basically, you know, joins to this scene, or sorry, joins to the other Game Boy. One of the Game Boy will have this one, one Game Boy will have this one, and the link cable will connect them. And then this version just has nine actors here. Ideally, I'd want it to have uh, no actors and just, so when you click, it will basically check to see where your cursor is and then do the check rather than um, having one actor for every single thing. And the reason why you don't want an actor for every single thing is because I would mean a hundred actors in this scene here, which obviously isn't feasible. Yeah, so obviously starting simple really helps um, get your head around the, you know, how the cable should be reacting. So basically the game has to, whoever's on this Game Boy has to make sure that they're at this point in the thing. They've had to set their boat and then, and then gotten to the point where it creates the host. And then basically when this Game Boy joins this scene, it basically just joins across the link cable and then transfers a thing and checks that the turn counters are the same thing. If they are, then it continues. If not, then this one gets kicked back to um, the start screen. Um, yeah, none of this is very like user friendly. It's all very programming right now. So um, it's not the best tutorial, I'm very sorry. Um, but it is at least a start on helping you if you want to make a link cable game. So one of them will host, one of them will join, then they'll transfer to check um, if that they if they have the same value, just like that video we I showed you a minute ago. So once they've they've transferred those things and checked that they're actually connected, this one actually closes its link cable thing, and that's because when it's open, the the player doesn't have any control. I found that when the link cable is open, they can't actually do anything, um, and I'm not actually sure to the extent that you can't do anything. For example, if you have to close this one too, or if you have to. Um, you know, I don't actually know how this works. That's the most annoying part. So when I was making this, I basically had to draw a simultaneous flow chart. So as you can see here, there is a board, uh, just a whiteboard, and it has two columns. And basically, it's just going down one by one, the two scenes simultaneously working through their um, things. Because you can imagine there's two Game Boys, this one here and this one here, where they both have to join and host at the same time and then transfer the information at the same time and make sure everything is happening at the same time. Um, and I also found that if one of them has like text open um, before, for example, the host, um, then when the join tries to join, there's nothing to join and it freezes basically. So it re it's really not um, very user friendly um, and I'm not exactly sure the optimum strategy for everything. I'll jump into the game now so you can actually see what I'm kind of talking about a bit better. It only works up to, you know, placing the boat when you only have this because GB Studio, when you press test or press play, it's only testing a single scene and you need two Game Boys basically with a link cable between them in order to actually test this. So the first thing you see when you start the game is this thing saying version 1.05. And this is extremely important if you actually want to test it because I've got two Game Boys here and um, you, 
basically I was using the Ben Venn um, electronics um, flasher, reflasher, to reflash these um, bootleg perfect dark carts to have the game on. Um, but basically, it, this is just to make sure that both versions of the game are using the same um, version, because I've got two cartridges here for both devices, and obviously the link cable to go between them. Um, to, in order to test this, um, I, I think I think I saw somebody in the subreddit saying that there is an emulator that lets you, you know, test what it's like to have a link cable between two and have two at the same time. Um, but I think it's always better to have it on the actual Game Boy, um, mainly because you don't you don't know what differences the software has to the actual hardware. Um, so yeah, having it on these two Game Boy cartridges and having this version pop up here is extremely good. For some reason, when I turned on my Game Boy, it had a different version, like it had the previous version, not the new version. Um, so it meant that I could just plug it back in and uh, reflash it and it'd be fixed, rather than wondering whether or not it was because of my error in this code or it's because I didn't actually update the cartridge. So having this version thing here is actually a great tip that um, I definitely recommend you do. So here we go, attack or defend, and if we attack, then we'll join this scene and hopefully just get kicked back to the thing by because there's an error. Um, but if we go to defend, then we'll host it. And as you can see here, we're being asked to place our boat, press A or B to rotate it. And then you use the directional pad to uh, place your thing. And this is actually technically the player right now. I'm not controlling an actor, I'm controlling the player. And then when I press um, start, it says both pl boat placed successfully. Uh, then make sure that it's got the positions correctly for me, like a debug. So it says A2 and A1, um, that's correct. And now it's actually hosting the thing, but there is no game to connect to it. Um, so ideally I'd want a button that lets me, you know, exit back to the start menu, but I don't have that. Um, but on the Game Boys, they now, if you would now, you know, basically connect the link cables and on the second one, press um, attack and now you join. And then it would obviously make sure it's connected and then um, you may now start attacking. And then when you click on these, it basically joins that host that um, was set up there and um, transfers an attack location based on uh, this A B or C and the one, two, three. So you can only actually transfer one value at a time. So instead of having two values that I, you know, transfer one after the other, I made it so, I made it so two value, these two values are actually in, into one variable. So the A is a zero, the B is a one, the C is a, is a two. And then this uh, one, two, three is a zero, 10, uh, 20, 30, 40, so, so this would be zero, zero, basically. This would be zero, one. This would be zero, two. This would be one, zero. The middle would be one, one, uh, and so on. Like, it's quite complicated because it's obviously everything's minus one in order to fit it into um, an actual, you know, I'm, I'm preparing for the 10 by 10 grid. Everything I do is like remembering that it's for the 10 by 10 grid, but also not trying to overwork myself in case this does, doesn't work. And currently I've made it so, you know, it, it does the attack location and then it uh, closes in order for this one, this scene here, to check that location against, you know, where the boat actually is. So how I do it is I, when I set the boat, I basically, you know, it said A1 and A2. Um, it's basically setting A1, which is, as you can see here, um, in the variables here, is its own variable, and if it has a boat in, it's 1, if it doesn't have anything in, it's 0. So if it has a 1, then it sends back hit, and then a hit uh, sprite will basically show up, and then if it's a miss, obviously a miss sprite will show up, um, and so basically it works. I remember when I was doing it in the you know, the first half of when I was doing it, I had te like a, a text box pop up every single time to basically tell me which part along I was. Um, but the annoying thing with that was I had to make sure I closed the the host Game Boy's um, text every time. But yeah, as soon as I removed all those text boxes popping up, I actually managed to get an entire game where I managed to clear the board, um, have everything I remiss or hit correctly, um, which is fantastic. So I did get there in the end, so I'm feeling hopeful. 
where I am now is I, I'm, I know it's possible, but I'm not sure to what extent. Like, I don't know how big uh, we could make um, a board knowing that each of these values has to be a variable based on what, how I'm doing it right now. And every single um, boat needs to be placed s like simultaneously, but also, um, you know, one by one knowing where the last boat was in a way. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of things that are going on in my brain that maybe is a bit chaotic um, to you guys. Another thing that I want to have is obviously both um, games setting their uh, boat and attacking each other one at a time. Um, so I will have to eventually mix this into one scene. One thing I need to address right now as well is that the grid the 10 by 10 grid is obviously 100 squares. So the first 100 variables in my game are going to be, you know, A1 to J10. And then depending on how I want to set up the second game, you know, having both players actually setting their boats and attacking each other, I will want to have, I, I may want to have this, the next 100, you know, the 101 to 200 um, variables set as the second amount of a1 to b2 but for the second player i'm thinking that might be a bit overkill and annoying to program for myself so i'm going to try and make sure that it is all in one set of 100 a1 to j10 values um but yeah there's a lot um that needs to be done for this but um i think what i'm going to do next is make it so both games have a boat and will be trying to fight each other and try and get it as clean as possible so that I can answer what really breaks it, you know? So for me and for you, I'm now going to run through each transfer event of how I'm imagining the final game playing out. So obviously one of them is hosting, one of them is joining. I'm not sure uh, which it matters at this very second. I'm, I'm imagining that the one waiting for the hit um, will need to host and then the one who's actually transferring the location data will need to join and then they'll transfer to check that they're on the same uh, page basically that they're actually connected um, and if they're not connected they obviously get sent back and say there was an error if they are connected it continues and when it continues it wants to then send the location data so for example when you click this it sends uh, the value zero zero and then this one will need to close its thing in order to uh, basically do the calculation. Is that location a boat? And then if it is a boat, it needs to send back either by joining or, uh, yeah, joining a new host that this guy has set up. Um, it needs to send the value uh, hit or miss. Um, and if it is a hit or miss, this one will then display as such. And if it is a hit, it needs to go again. So then this one needs to host and then this one gets to go again so it needs to join with the new data um, and obviously if it misses then this one will now need to host and this one will join and send its uh, you know locational data but it does need to have a test at the end to see if it's broken uh, if that you know if the link was broken yeah this is arguably one of the hardest gb studio um, tutorials that i'll be making um, but I'm very glad I'm doing it because I'm learning a lot and it's, although it's spending, although I'm spending a lot of time on this, I think it's hopefully going to be valuable, valuable for you guys. While I was working on this, I had loads of ideas for, you know, link cable games, you know, but yeah, I, uh, I hope you found this video slightly helpful, um, at least in figuring out how the link cable may be feasible in working and in the next video, I will definitely try and have two games playable at once in which you you place your boat and then you're attacking. Um, and hopefully that will be the groundwork for the 10 by 10 grid. But yeah, I think that's enough rambling for now. Let me know if you found the, you know, the explanations of the joining and hosting of the, of the link cable events to be useful. Um, and I'll try and be m like clearer in my next one. I'm hoping that by, you know, making these two scenes be the same scene, it will actually increase how simple it is. I'll put my patrons up on the screen right now. Thank you very much to you guys. Remember to like the video if you like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. 
please leave a comment on what you thought of this. If I was bad at explaining, good at explaining, if the topic is interesting. Because um, I definitely want to continue this and get and actually, you know, create a final product of this that I can, you know, share with you guys and you can almost use as a template for link cable games. Even if you don't want the the project, you can at least use this information in your own projects. Currently, I'm still trying to get my head around it. Obviously, I technically succeeded. Like I said, I, with those two Game Boys, I managed to get a, a grid completely full up. Um, uh, there's no like end scene, you know, like wind condition. Um, so that will obviously be another thing I need to do. But yeah, um, I'll see you in the next video. And uh, thank you very much for watching.